In this video, we're creating an Alt Systems app with SAP extensibility in two simple steps. So the first step here in the management console is to create a, a data fabric connections to SAP, either using the BAPI protocol or the OData protocol. Those are the two ones supported. So I'm using an existing connection, which is the SAP OData. SAP OData is now retrieving three entities from SAP and for the customer are using 10 attributes which we'll use while creating the screen lifecycle in the, the OutSystem Studio. So let's get to the second stage of this demo. The second stage is all about retrieving the data that we've just created, right? And their setup. So you see that I only have these two uh, uh, entities and I need to add a, another public element which is the newly created uh, or the existing uh, customer entity. As soon as this is done, we are ready to start scaffolding the, the screens for this particular SAP entity. So the next stage is to add a screen. I will just call it the customer detail screen. And the customer is a blank screen, doesn't have nothing. What I'm going to start giving him some personality uh, setting some styles, but also getting the data that is needed to create a compelling visual view of the SAP data. So this is some of the 10 attributes that we got. I still need the, the supplier so that I can start adding and updating the supplier information and SAP. And for now, we're done. We're going to create now the second screen, which is the customer detail screen. And the customer detail is going to be a bit different, but it's exactly seamless the same way we created the customer master screen. For the custom detail, we're going to use a different visual element, which is the form. And the form is going to be added, uh, is going to be loaded with my customer, but it's going to be inferred on a list format so that I can update and visualize the, the record of this particular customer that I've selected on the master view. So as I click the save button, I am going to use an entity action that is binded to the customer, which is the update a customer. And for that, I need to pass the record that we are just editing. And lastly, I'm going to refresh the information on the main screen by jumping into the customer. So the next stage is going into the customer and connecting the detail screen. For that, I'm going to use the customer name, just pushing everything to the left. And on the expression, I'm going to link to the customer detail screen, passing exactly the, the existing element that I've just clicked. So the final stage is just to make sure that everyone can access this. I'm just going this going to be the RBAC uh, to all users and we are good to go. And I'm going to start publish this second stage. And, and to finalize, I will just explain how the BAPI works. So for our data, it comes as, a, as an entity. For BAPI, it comes as a server action. So if I look to a predefined customer list that I've created, instead of using a screen aggregate, we're going to use a data action that gets information from the BAPI. It lists, it filters the list and sorts by customer. And in the end, for each element of the list, we're going to create a record on the visual element of the table. And as soon as this is done, it's going to be rendered and we have the table ready to be presented to the user. Let's first test the two screens that we've just created for the main flow, which is the customer screen and the detail screen. So if I go to my portal, I will see that I have the customer screen, exactly what we did on the left. If I click and go to the detail screen, I see there's this test, let's just is a different just to make sure that now he updates and refreshes the information of the supplier for this particular customer. And finally, I to test the BAPI function, it's exactly the same approach, but in this case, we will see the protocol using the BAPI connection and it has a different data, it is going to a different system, but that's pretty much it. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Bye-bye for now.